Good morning, Grace Lord. Yeah. How are y'all doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, as you know, last Sunday, the Korean congregation had the second time online service, which was totally unfamiliar with me. You know, it took much time to set up and make things happen because uh, I was not good at the kind of a modern technology. But I think it turned out good. So how was your two weeks in home? Was it a good time or a bad time with your family? Even though we had online service yesterday, unfortunately, uh, English-speaking congregation like you had no service. Uh, I was, uh, I'm sorry about that. That's why I try to communicate with you and sharing the Word of God today. So please listen carefully and keep that in mind what I said and do what you heard today, right? Okay. Uh, as you know, we are going over the Lord's Prayer and the Lord's Prayer is a perfect prayer and perfect example showing us how to pray. So, I encourage you to use this prayer when you pray to God in your private room. This season is Lent, and Lent is a good time to pray, so I want you to go to the, your private room to pray. And many people pray for their selfish desire or personal gain, and their prayer is focused on their purposes. But the Lord's Prayer is a God-centered prayer. When you do the Lord's Prayer, your prayer is well balanced. So, how do you use the Lord's Prayer for your prayer? You can divide it into eight parts. The first part is calling God our Father who art in heaven. You want to call God Father and enjoy your relationship with the Father who is not like your biological father. And after that, the second part, your kingdom come. You confess your kingdom come. Thinking about any place, community, or even people who need God's governance and ruling. For example, you can pray for a missionary or people in need you may know a family who need God's kingdom. You may ask God to rule over family. It is very powerful prayer. And after this prayer, you confess, Lord, you will be done. Ask for God's presence on you, your family, and the victim of even coronavirus. When God's will is on us, we are reshaped, redirected, and reordered to walk in God's path. So, so far, we've learned the three patterns, right? And today, we are going to go over the rest of the Lord's Prayer. Jesus uh, teaches us to pray, give us our daily bread. This prayer teaches us three things. First, God wants us to ask for the proper portion of our need. People always want to have something more, something more, something more. For some, their simple goal is to increase their possessions. I want to have more, I want to have more. Some people believe that they could, be, they could be independent and satisfied only if they lack some, nothing. What is an interesting thing is that the rich try harder to make a fortune. However, what God wants us to do is to ask for His grace, which is sufficient for a daily basis, day by day, day by day. That's why Jesus teaches us to pray, give us our daily bread. 
And secondly, this prayer encourages us to pray for our bodily need and well-being. Jesus knows our bodily needs and the requirement needed for our well-being. This is why Jesus fulfilled his disciples' spiritual needs as well as physical need. And why you should pray earnestly to God if you have a physical need? I hope that when you pray to God to fulfill your physical need, that it will be answered. And thirdly, as Jesus taught his prayer, he taught us to pray that God give us our daily bread, not my daily bread. Our daily bread and my daily bread. Why did Jesus say give us our daily bread instead of give me my daily bread? Because Jesus wanted to teach us that we are one united community. This is why we should not focus on and pray about our individual need, but for others as well. It is very important. The Christian cannot be a selfish people. Jesus taught us to forgive our debtors as he had forgiven our debt. If our daily bread was used by Jesus to teach us about our physical need, then forgive our debtors was about our spiritual need. We are sinners, which is why we need forgiveness, right? However, there is a, a condition. We must first forgive others. Jesus told us that we should forgive others as he has forgiven us. He also taught us that to keep God's forgiveness, we should continually forgive others. However, the problem is that forgiveness is a top thing to do. Do you think that forgiveness is easy or difficult? Forgiveness is not an easy thing. It is hard to do. This is why Jesus taught us that we shouldn't leave forgiveness up to our free will, but leave it up to prayer to God. Let me repeat it again. This is why Jesus taught us that we shouldn't leave forgiveness up to our free will, but leave it up to in prayer to God. Just as we pray for our bodily need, we must also pray for our spiritual matters and forgiveness. So don't be disappointed because you cannot forgive and instead pray that God will change you. And that's one last petition. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Why did Jesus teach us this prayer? This is because we need to remember that we are weak beings that fall under temptation. Some people say that they are strong against the devil. You know, they are mistaken. We should remember that even David and Moses were tempted. Because we cannot overcome temptation, Jesus taught us that we should pray. This prayer is the last prayer. But through this prayer, we are able to become more like Jesus. In the future, when you pray, I hope that you can use the Lord's Prayer so that your prayer becomes well-balanced and biblical prayer. Through this prayer, I hope you become close to God during this Lent of season. Okay, thank you and have a good day, my brother. Bye-bye.